Welcome to Forbes Newsroom. I'm Maggie McGrath, senior editor at Forbes, and I'm sitting here today with my colleague, Mike Ozanian, who just reported some breaking news from the NFL. Mike, welcome. Thanks for having me, Maggie. Thanks for being here. I, you know, I saw this story go up and my eyes popped out of my head. Can you tell us what you just broke today? Sure. Dan Snyder, who he and his family own the Washington Commanders, the NFL team, they own 100% of it. They've hired Bank of America Securities to explore either the sale of the team in its entirety or perhaps a minority interest in the team. Now, I was shocked because I've been following, well, I'm an Eagles fan, so, you know, rivalries aside, Dan has owned the team since 1999. He purchased it for about $750 million. How much is it worth today? Well, we last valued it a couple of months ago at $5.6 billion. Uh, NFL teams are red hot. The NFL is growing at a rapid clip. They're still on verge of selling Sunday Ticket, which is a very valuable package. Currently, that gets about $1.5 billion a year. Some people think when they sell it, it's going to get $2 billion a year on average. So as you can see, the value of all NFL teams because of that deal, it's split equally, is going to go up. And there's a lot of other things the NFL is doing, whether it be investing in related businesses or selling other media content, that's increasing the value of all teams. So, you know, if he sells the whole team, he could get, if Jeff Bezos comes knocking, who's down in that D.C. area, I don't know, the sky's the limit, maybe $8 billion? Oh my goodness. Is Bezos a potential buyer, do you think? Yeah, that's, that's part of the buzz right now. I, I mean, I've heard of such a wide range of names because of the location of this team. Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland area, it's got that sort of tri-state appeal. The current stadium in Maryland is just a few miles from D.C. Besides the politics, D.C. is one of the highest net worth metro areas in the country. I've even heard Elon Musk's name pop up. Oh, Musk is a little busy right now, I, but, you know, I won't put a bet on that. But I really was surprised because Snyder has owned it for so long, and it feels like he's been digging in. I know Dan Snyder has a negative reputation, and there have been some troubles with the team and his management over the past few years. In 2020, there were sexual harassment allegations within the organization. Earlier this summer, he testified in front of Congress around workplace mismanagement and mistreatment. How much do those issues play into this news today? Maggie, I don't think very much. I, I think, to be fair to Dan, I think he's done a really good job of cleaning house over the last several years and getting rid of people who, you know, supposedly did things that were not appropriate, bringing in some really good people. We've talked about how much the team is worth. Is that literally, and I, I know I say this as a biased Eagles fan, is that literally what the team, is the Washington Commanders worth $5.6 billion, or are there other considerations or elements of this package that play into that valuation? At this point, looking at it from the outside and being a number cruncher like I am and looking at the brand of this team, the rebranding has been very successful from the Washington Redskins to the Washington Commanders. Their sponsorship revenue this year is probably going to be up around 30 percent from 2021. They just signed their re uh, most richest sponsorship deal in history with SeatGeek. So the rebranding is, is, is doing a, you know, they've been doing a very good job. Uh, they are also looking for a new stadium, FedEx Field. It's kind of getting a little old. Uh, they probably want a stadium somewhere in the same area, but right now it could be Maryland, could be Virginia, could be something closer to D.C., so they've got that option. And it's also a team that owns a lot of valuable real estate. They own about 260 acres right around FedEx Field. Their headquarters is in Virginia. They own another 150 or so acres there. So th this is not just a NFL franchise play. This is also a real estate play. Are you surprised then that he's exploring this sale? I mean, what is the benefit to selling versus holding on to all of that real estate for himself? Well, look, you know, depending on what he decides to do, he may be out there poking around and say, look, if I get a crazy valuation for this team by someone, Maybe why not take it? Maybe the best thing in terms of for me and for my family, pass along the wealth. Also, if he does a minority stake sale, he can retain control of the team. He could still run it, but he could bring in partners that will give him a lot of cash. Perhaps some of that cash would go towards financing a new stadium, still run the team. But at the same time, depending on who he brings in, it could help with the rebranding. It could help with other business opportunities. If he brings in some, you know, big tech guy, 
uh, who can really take advantage of all the things happening in technology. So, you know, I really get a sense right now, since this is a very attractive franchise for a potential buyer in a very wealthy market, that he's going to explore all options. I do not expect the sale of this team to happen quickly. What does that mean? Is this going to drag out for 6, 12, 18 months? I, I would say perhaps up to a year. I would be surprised longer than that. But it could be up to a year. What does it mean for the fans and well, the people look, who love this team? <laughs> look, look, I'm a big NFL fan. I'm a Giant fan. If you're, you're an Eagle fan, <laughs> you know one thing matters, winning. And I, and I think that what they really care about is the product on the field. Uh, and then second would be the experience at the stadium. And I think they're looking at who these partners are going to be or who a new owner would be and how much money they would have to put into a team. Uh, the NFL does have a salary cap, so it sort of limits in terms of what your roster could be. But they want to see, is there going to be some, uh, you know, is there going to be some buzz put into this team and, and, and with the product? That, I think that is really what they care about. The team has not been that good in recent years, showing signs of a turnaround this season. Uh, but I think with a new owner, maybe they want to just kind of see, was well, this somebody that really is going to take this team and make it a better product? I alluded earlier to Snyder having a negative reputation, and I know there's been some controversy among other NFL team owners, with the Colts owner saying in October that given some of the allegations around workplace mismanagement that Snyder should not be the owner of the team. For folks who've kind of been following that, how related is that activity to this announcement today? Like, did they push him out? Can they push him out? Or is this entirely autonomous? I, I don't think that uh, Roger Goodell who's the commissioner of the NFL, uh, and a lot of the other owners are looking to push out Dan Snyder. I, I think in some of these situations that have popped up and some of the allegations, they've proven to have been planted, actually, into the Washington Post. As you remember, Dan Snyder, maybe two years ago, bought out th as three minority investors in the team. It was found that they were and the investment bank they were working for because they were trying to buy out Dan Snyder were actually planting misinformation. So I, I think that when you step away from a lot of the day-to-day -day noise, I think Dan is pretty secure as owner. I think it's really up to him whether he wants to sell or get out uh, stay or stay into the team. Um, it's, it's hard to really tell some of these allegations. You know, the fact that they're there in D.C. and he's, and you know, they're, they're dragging stuff before Congress and stuff like that. Politics, as you know, as well as anyone, Maggie, you know, can be a very dirty game. Everyone's got an agenda. So it's, it's really hard to tell from the outside knowing what's exactly true, what's not. I can tell you from the business side and from the rep he has with advertisers and sponsors, that uh, the rebranding has certainly gone well uh, and that the business side of the team is, is definitely booming. So you reported this news today. We talked about what the fans want to see, what the rumors are about the new owner. What is next? What can we expect to see out of this space in the next one, two, three weeks? I think you're going to see a tremendous amount of stuff sort of breaking over the next days and weeks about people who might be interested, people who are interested, a lot of comments from a lot of rich people in terms of would they want to buy this team. Now you got to remember, it's, it's, this is going to have to be like a Forbes rich list type person because whomever buys the team and is going to be the managing partner, they have to basically uh, put down 30% of the equity per NFL rules. So, you know, there's not a lot of debt on this team. So you're talking about somebody like, look at Rob Walton when he bought the Denver Broncos, $4.65 billion. There's a mega billionaire, right? A guy's worth, what, $50 billion? We're talking about somebody that's going to have that type of money if they're going to buy controlling interest in the team. So it's not going to be like a Tom Hanks or a Tom Brady or, I you know, Brady's otherwise occupied at the moment, but it's not going to be a celebrity. It will be someone from the Forbes 400 or something I, I like wouldn't, that. You know what, Maggie? I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. In fact, I would expect some, uh, some Hollywood types and people like that to be investors in the team, but probably not the controlling owner. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Maggie.